Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. This week I have nine new reviews for you folks. Some of them are for me, some of them from our contributor, Ian Mitchell. Um, but nine new reviews for you folks at home, mostly now. <laughs> that week, this week, that includes, though, uh, Life Reset, Conquest, New Era Online, book number five, the fifth book in that series. Also, the Dungeon Slayer, a little bit level up adventure, the Dungeon Slayer series, book number one. And also a couple of short stories this week for you, including This Poo Shall Pass, a Caverns and Creatures short story, and a short story from Tao Wonk um, from the System Apocalypse series called A New Script. So there we go, four reviews from me personally. We also have some reviews um, from our contributor, I'd mentioned, including Dragonheart, book number seven, Silver Fox and the Western Hero, Bio Dungeon, Rise, Last Chance, and Rebel Star, uh, the eighth book in the System Apocalypse series. Before we begin any of that, of course, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Lit RPG news, we are going to begin uh, with a nice collaboration effort from the Lit RPG podcast, the uh, Lit RPG audiobook podcast, and of course, Sound Booth Theater. Um, just today, the day this is actually being recorded, uh, which would be Thursday, the 13th of August, um, I and Ray Johnson did a, a segment for Sound Booth Theater Live on the YouTube channel, Facebook channel. Uh, it was streamed out to the internet live, and we got comments from you folks at home. Uh, and a segment called R&R for Ray and Ramon, or Reviews and Remunctiousness, whatever you want to use it, call it us. Uh, but it was a live stream where I talked to Ray Johnson about the things he was doing, um, a, a special review that he did live on the air with me. I also reviewed another a, a book as well, uh, but mostly it's just us chit chatting and talking about little BG and products we're working on. It's just fun, uh, kind of fun just to talk to somebody. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get the chance to talk to many too many people these days, uh, so that was enjoyable. Uh, we'll have links in the show notes for you to go check it out. Um, in other little BG news, a new audiobook focused newsletter went out from Listener's Newsletter, which is a collaboration between Michael Chantfield and yours truly. Um, a twice, so it's a twice a month newsletter that highlights the best audiobooks. Um, for now, it's focused on Little BG, um, which is why I'm involved. I'm mean, Michael Chatfield is the author of the uh, a couple of great Little BG series, including uh, em the Emerilia series. Um, he basically approached me and said, hey, Ron, I'm going to do some other thing. You already do literature audiobooks on a, on a weekly basis. Could you work with me and help us out? And I just said, yeah, sure. It's, it's, a, it's a fun project. It's very reader or listener focused in this case. And getting you guys um, doing something that essentially Amazon and Amazon don't really do is sending you titles to your newsletter, to your emails about uh, the good literary stuff that's coming out in audiobook form. Um, so that's what it is. Um, and for now, it's just a little bit of focus, but uh, Michael is actually a commissioned a setup of a, of a backend system where you can essentially choose a, a bunch of different genres. And if there's enough demand for it, he said that he'll start doing separate um, newsletters that just focus on those of the dress. If you're a horror fan or if you're a fantasy fan or whatever the case is, if there's enough demand for it, um, he'll start to also sending newsletters just, just focusing on those uh, genres and subgenres for audiobooks, and you can just get good stuff sent to you in the mail um, twice monthly about just some popular titles that are out. So, there we go. Um, in some sadder news, uh, we have some plagiarized stories on Amazon. There's actually probably about five or six a week that I that I I'm guessing are plagiarized. Um, it's very hard for me to prove they're plagiarized. They're generally titles that are just have this like really generic fantasy covers and just some text on there um but when you grab like the first chapter or like the first sentences of any of the chapters and you do a ghost search in it um it'll come up as you know some of the story on world road or the web novels or somewhere else um and this week i actually could prove three of them were 100 percent plagiarized uh from other sources that includes uh the mortal rpg by dan watson it's actually ripped off from um rd dream um for the story called the mortal um instead of more rpg it's actually called the immortal player um so it's totally ripped off um it, a big clue here for me is that on the cover, uh, cover says, oh, it's a number one best-selling series, which 
This hasn't been sold before, so that can be true. And it's also a National Book Award finalist, which is also not true with a simple Google search. Um, so both Flagrant Lies were huge, and I care that this is a, a plagiarized book and a search of, of the, um, again, actual text from the from the novel show that this is indeed um, ripped off from the immortal player on web novels. Um, again, for all these stories, we'll have links in the show notes for the original source material. If you want to go check them out there, feel free to do so. Just please don't support these on Amazon, or please just leave reviews saying they're plagiarized um, and report them to Amazon as I did. Um, another one that's been plagiarized is called Dungeon Tutorial. It's actually uh, on the Royal Road, Script Hub, and the author's Patreon, um, and it's called Dungeon's Path. Um, the author even has a, a note on his title on his uh, Royal Road page saying, I am not publishing this on Amazon. I, I'm only publishing on these particular places, Royal Road, Script Hub, and my, and my Patreon. So he, he, I'm sure he's received the message already before, um, but I did try to contact him to let him know that this was the case. Uh, so again, and also the last one is World Dom- Domination, which is a plagiarized version of the World Development System on web novels. And again, these all you can generally tell when this is a, a plagiarized situation because there are a couple clues. One, the cover is just super generic fantasy art that they probably ripped off from somewhere um, on the internet. Um, the author name has no previous works. Uh, people just decided to create accounts and play dry story, hoping the new one will catch them uh, before they get paid um, from Amazon. But Amazon though has a, 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 I think it's like a two or three month window where they collect data for, for um, purchases and Kindle limited reads before they actually pay an author. Um, and this is exactly why, because well, one of the reasons why, um, to make sure that the person publishing this novel is actually the person who owns the rights to it. Um, so, um, and again, if you, when you see these generic fantasy covers, sometimes they're actually authors who are publishing their first novel. Um, but I, I generally check myself first. Whereas I go, I'll highlight a copy and paste it into a Google search. I'll actually search web novels and rural directly, uh, for something like this and other readers, um, well, actually, in the in the reviews, generally say, "Oh, this is plagiarized or not." I'm reading this on not, uh, on Royal Road as this particular title, so check, keep an eye out for those. Um, and if you see any, feel free to send a note to the podcast. We'll we'll let people know that this is a plagiarized title. And again, for all these titles in particular, I have tried to contact the the original um, rights holders to let them know that uh, somebody is ripping off their stuff. Okay, that's it for Liturgy News. On to stuff that is out now, including War of the Posers, the Bad Guys book number four, um, New Era Online book number five, which I'm actually reviewing, so I should take that off there. Um, Chrysalis, Beast Rooms book number one. I, I couldn't get through Chrysalis. Um, I got through the first like 20% of it, and it was like, oh no, this is didn't work for me. I didn't finish it, though, which is why it's not actually getting a review. I just couldn't get through the first portion of it. It um, was not entertaining for me. Um, also, though, is The Way of the Force, Heavenly Throne, book number two, which is doing amazingly well. I think it hit, like, Amazon 150, uh, first day it was out. Um, also, out though, is, again, The Dragonheart, book number seven. Uh, also, Derelict, book number two, Counterattack, by uh, Dean uh, Henniger. I've enjoyed book number one. Um, also, though, is the second book in the Perils Prodigy called Tree of Ascension. I'm actually going to pull up the, the novel page there just because... Oops, never mind. Uh, novel page. Uh, this um, you probably won't recognize the cover there. Um, it's just related to another book that was actually um, pretty popular. But I don't. I think this particular cover is not really matching the particular series for Perils Prodigy. Um, so you might have actually read book number and enjoyed it, and you're just not recognizing the book too. Is that because the novel cover doesn't match the first one? So just beware. Um, also, I thought was Bugs the First and uh, Douche Mage, a Glitch World original. Um, and Winterborn, book number two by uh, Stuart Gross. I actually like book number one. So please go read these things. In new audiobooks, we have Backlash, a second skin novel, book number five. We also have City of the Dead, Alchemist, book number one by Selim Hanko. Also, Expedition Noob, Sun and Shadow Online, book number two. Um, and Twilight Templar, The Eternal Journey, book number one. Also, the fifth book in the Tower of Power series. And the fourth book in the Transformation series called Dark Academy. Also, the second book in Dragonborn, um, sorry, in the 4X strategy series, Dragonborn, called uh, Warlord of the Circle Seas. And the third book in the Glory of the Formation Emperor called Path of the Soul is also out as an audiobook. Whew. All kinds of stuff that's out now. On to upcoming Liturgy, which is I read off a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future, uh, including the Idol System 
book number six, which is out on August 15th. Trinity of the High, book number one, out on August the 17th. This particular book, I wasn't really sure if it was going to be literary read from the novel description. Uh, it's contacted by Tao Wong, who's the author of the System Model series. He says, um, well, a representative said that he's starting a publishing company, um, and this is the first book that they're publishing. Um, that's not like one of his stories. Um, so it's Tao knows what Liturgy is. I don't doubt for a second this is going to be Liturgy, so I'm putting it on the list now. Um, so that's Hive Night out on August the 17th. August the 18th is going to be Intellectium. August 21st is going to be Raider Olympus Reborn, book number two. August the 20th is going to be the second book in the Mecha Battle series called Overdrive. Overdrive is the series name, book number two. Uh, August 21st, Olympus Reborn, book number two. August 23rd, The System Multiverse, book number two. August 24th, it'll be War of the Gods. August 25th, Dream Stream Reality. August 27th, Small Unit Tactics, Volume 1. September the 4th is going to be the fifth book in the Discardium series. September the 9th is going to be Dungeon Worlds. On September the 15th, it'll be Stolen Lives. On September the 16th, uh, the Guild Core Dungeon Born, a Dungeon Core Little Bitty novel. On August, sorry, September the 18th, third book in the Olympus Reborn series. September 21st, it'll be the third book in the Eternal Journey series. September 30th, the fourth book in the God's Game series. On October the 1st, it'll be the fifth book in the Bad Guy series. On October the 1st, it'll be Legends Online book number seven. October the 7th, second, rather. It'll be Dungeon Crawler, Carl by Matt Dinneman, who's a an author. October the 6th, it'll be Life in Exile book number three. October the 7th, it'll be City of Goblins in the System, book number one. October the 26th, the fourth book in the Underdog series. October 27th, it'll be the third book in the Eternal Online series. On November the 23rd, Quest for the Amber Relic. There you go. All the stuff that I know is coming out in the near future. On to new releases and reviews. And first up this week is going to be Life Reset, Conquest, New Era Online, book number one, written by Shimer Kuznets. It is 463 pages, $5.99. It's available online on Kindle Limited. It is, uh, sorry, not available online, it's just available as Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. A prophecy foretold. The fate of thousands on the line, with one major enemy to- enemy town behind them, the Green Peace Clan marches onwards to new conquest, facing Orin and his monster army are the combined forces of the so-called civilized races, intent on halting his invasion of their territory. Reality blurs as Orin fights harder than ever to save the trapped players, his clan, and his family. So there we go. Uh, full disclosure, I received an advanced copy for a review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Uh, this story continues the to expand the scope in the second arc, second arc of the series. Uh, the game world has changed and the main character has adapted and found a way to keep his monster empire safe by expanding and conquering the neighboring cities and towns. There's minor advancement of the plot to free all the players trapped in the game, but lots of city and kingdom building, which is going to be a plus for, for a lot of readers. Um, there's also resource management and large battles to defend and attack cities. Overall, it's a good story with some interesting villains, good fights, and crunchy little bit stuff for those that like kingdom building in particular. It gets scores 7.7 7 out of 10 for me. I enjoyed it. I always enjoy this series, though, so it was really kind of a no-brainer. Um, I don't think there's anything that Shimmer has written in that. <laughs> that I haven't liked. Um, he's a good author, and he, he always incorporates his game mechanics very well into the story. Um, so always a, always a pleasure to read them. And next up, we have The Dungeon Slayer, a little bit of level of adventure, The Dungeon Slayer series, book number one, written by Conrad Ryan. Uh, this is 370 pages, 99 cents right now. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Mankind has been under attack for 50 years by the awesome power of bosses and monsters who are the denizens of dungeons. Monsters started to these attacks when a mystical beast named Rasek appeared and threatened the world, eradicating human life from several continents. Rakas threatened all human life until a mysterious ceremony called Rebirth unlocked the hidden potential of humans strong enough to repel and defeat her. Rakes final, desperate act caused dungeons to spawn across the globe. The greatest of these dungeons is known as Titan. Dungeons are a threat to humanity and nature alike. Powerful reborn humans, known as Slayers, enter their dungeon depths to kill the monsters and bosses that live within and retrieve treasure, items, and more. 
Tad Harrington, a video game loving 16 year old high school student, was bullied relentlessly throughout his life. Tad's rebirth date has come. His last hope is to be born a slayer strong enough to enter the toughest dungeons where a life of power and luxury could await. When things don't go according to plan, Tan finds out he has a special rebirth, one that can level up and grow stronger by defeating monsters. Starting from level 1, how high can Tad climb? Can he overcome the challenges and become the ultimate dungeon slayer? So there you go. Um, this novel was actually a surprise in that I, I enjoyed it. The beginning portion of it was, to say the least, annoying. Um... It has one of the whiniest openings I think I've ever read. Um, and I mean, I, I personally, from a writing standpoint, I understand um, showing like the low place the main character starts off from. So that he has some, uh, he can make progress in the story, become a better person, more powerful character, better personality, whatever the case is. Um, but this, this whiny section in the beginning of the story just kind of went on for such a long time that it just got really annoying and I was really tempted to just like put down the novel. Um, thankfully I pushed past it and the story really does improve. Once the main character, um, gets to the dungeon diving portion of this novel, everything from there on in is like really entertaining, really good. And there's still a little bit of whining here and there, but other horses just part of the character progression arc of him becoming more powerful, more confident as his, as his skills, strengths, and stats grow. Um, the, there's some actually very interesting like world building done in the story that, um, to me sort of conflicts with the RPG stuff that the main character uses, um, in this world, um, which is described in the novel description. So this is not like spoilery. Um, there are, I think there's a technical term in the novel, but it's like essentially dungeon monsters and dungeon monsterish ghosts that are threatening like the atmosphere and, and the weather from the world, like blocking out the sun, making it super cold. Um, and these kind of spirits are released. Uh, there are also additionally monsters that actually spawn from dungeons threatening human lives. Um, and so people have discovered a way to um, tap into their potential through a rebirth process. Um, and the main character goes through this process only to discover that he has a power, a power level of zero, um, which becomes, you know, which is less than even a normal person, a, a citizen. Um, and that changes as he gets the RPG interface, but there is an inherent conflict, at least for me, when I was reading this, um, between the system that's described for everybody else and the system that is described for the main character. It's, it's, it's this really weird, um, conflict of like powers like the main character getting a bunch of stuff that's very rpg described classes skills stats and all that great stuff but it's it's just really oddly applied between like the larger system where people describe in terms of just like a power number and their powers are just like never really described um in those terms um so it's just like a small little detail that just like took a little bit away from me otherwise other than that though the story really was quite good um from Again, from the, essentially the first time the main character goes dungeon diving, there's lots of good action. There's the main character who fights in a dungeon with the group, he grows on his power, he develops characters, he unlocks the mysteries of his abilities and why he is the way he is. Um, and the end had like this really like enjoyable dark turn that I wasn't expecting. So like I said, there, the novel has a slightly rocky start, which is probably fine. And I believe, um, speaking to the author's representatives, will say that this is his first novel, which is understandable but like i said it's very well written for being such um and it has some very nice pacing um the rpg stuff shows about up about seven at, at the, about the seven percent mark of the novel when it comes the main character gets his power rating of zero but also gets access to this rpg interface that allows him to um develop his stats grow powers gets a bunch of abilities that are going very rpg related um but oddly enough he doesn't always recognize him though he's a, a gamer um, however, again, this is again, one of those aspects where the game mechanics have, I, I have an issue with them just because his powers, they, they feel rather one way and they're, again, they're slightly inconsistent in their development and that the main character, um, I'll give you an example. Essentially the main character at the beginning of the novel, when he starts to do dungeon knife, he, he uses tools, um, for healing and for spell casting, like a, a healer's crook and a, a mage's wand. And the minute he touches them, he gets magical spells and get magical abilities um for those tools however that's not applied when he's using a warrior sword or some other piece of equipment um 
And again, those particular tools being used for a class as, as a restricted class item don't really match up again with the previous world building that was done that somebody just gets a power reading and they're classified in this particular you know category and they're, and they're allowed to dive in dungeons or clear the skies from monsters as a creator, whatever the case is. Um, there's really no world building done that justifies like it, anybody really having like class specific abilities because they don't have classes. Um, that's something that's very much a part of the main character's RPG interface and the way he's, he's defining his, 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 his power system. Um, so again, just like small conflicts. And again, that's, it's a, it's a minor thing for somebody who really loves game mechanics like I do. Um, other than like those small issues though, like, so the story was still very entertaining. Um, the, even though the main character does get his powers in kind of a wand wavy way where he's not really earning them, they're just kind of showing up. Um, the powers are so well used in fights. So, like they create some variation of powers, and he does use them intelligently to to maximize their benefits and combining them in, in interesting ways. Um, and and they create tension. And, and and other aspects of the game mechanics really are well fleshed out and, and described. Uh, a majority of the power progression comes from his increasing his stats as he levels, and those stats have actual real impact in the story and the main character's physical descriptions and how he fights. Increasing his strength um, or his dexterity have like real like physically described um, consequences. And I like the fact that they have an impact in that respect. That aspect of the game mechanics is again done well and it applies very um, well to, to in the story. Um, overall, this is very good action filled story. And I, there are a couple things again that drop the, my level in me because I'm, I love game mechanics and I like and my brain has an issue when they don't make sense or there there's conflicting kind of concepts there. Uh, but again, that, that's really me. Even, even with those issues and some of the one weapon moments, it's still a good dungeon diving story. And again, the, the darker aspects of the story world that, and the develop towards the end of the story were really quite interesting and unexpected. So for me, it's a score of 7.6 out of 10. Um, again, once you get to that dungeon of importance of the story, the fighting and the character progression are very entertaining. Um, and it gets a score of 7.6 out of 10 for the Dungeon Slayer, a lit RPG level up adventure, the Dungeon Slayer series, book number one. Okay, next up is going to be This Poo Shall Pass, Cowards and Creatures, written by Robert Bevan. This is a uh, Cowards and Creatures short story. Uh, it is 36 pages, $2.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Having a charisma score of four seems pretty bad when you're constantly shitting yourself because of it, but things can get even worse for Cooper when he can't squeeze out so much as a shart. The pressure builds as he and his friends seek answers to help this volcano erupt. Can they discover the mysterious cause of Cooper's constipation in time to save him? Find out in this exciting new Caverns and Creatures adventure. And like all of Robert Bevan's stories, this is very much a lot of cursing. Um, in this case, so many poop jokes. Um, it's and, and so if that's not your kind of sense of humor, don't pick this up. You're just going to be annoyed at that. But if, if you, if you're like me, you're giggling just reading the novel description, you're going to enjoy this. Um, I, I really always enjoyed the Cavern and Creature series. I've, I've enjoyed <laughs> what Robert Revan has done with it. I've always think of it as, as Letter Bridge Gamelet. Um, and this is a very entertaining story. Um, again, in these short stories, there's not a lot of development of levels or character stats, but they always exist in this story. Like the main character, or in this particular story, um, Cooper, the, the barbarian, has a low charisma stat, and it always causes problems um, because he min-maxed, essentially, for this, as, as high strength, low charisma. Um, and it was just kind of a nice twist on his usual problems with his charisma. I was like, oh, that's... That is neat. Instead of him always pooping everywhere because of his low charisma and offending everybody, in this case, he can't. And it's a super big issue for this character. Even get some um, backstory that didn't exist before for Cooper in in, in this issue. Is that that was a nice little little addition. But in, in general, it's just kind of fun story that doesn't take itself seriously. Like Robert Bevan as author is just humorous and witty, surprisingly witty, and and and. and just fun stories. Um, so for me, it's a score seven point four to ten. That's this poo shall pass, which is a good score uh, with scores again seven point four out of ten. I thought it was funny. 
And next is going to be the new, a new script, A System Apocalypse Short Story. The System Apocalypse Short Story is book number two, written by Tao Wang. Um, this is 24 pages. This is another short story. It is 99 cents, which is very well priced. But it is not available on Kindle. But I think the author is actually using this as like a reader magnet or something, like where he gives it out to get people to sign up for his, uh, as a reward, I should say, for signing for his newsletter or for his company's newsletter. Um, the novel description is a new script is set in Vancouver, BC, and showcases an unusual adventuring party in the day-to-day -day struggles of individuals who aren't necessarily suited to the apocalypse. It is set between books four and five and features new characters. So there you go. Um, it's a good story. Like, it really is. Like, um, I, I don't think I've ever been read, read anything by Taiwan that I wasn't enjoyable. Um, and even in this, like, short 24 pages, it's a nice story with some interesting characters. Um, again, it's independent of the main series, so you don't have to worry about like crossing storylines or anything. Um, it features a group of survivors that have gained the script or movie related abilities, like edit line script, which generates quests and bonus uh, credits, um, edit, which can cut out injuries if caught quickly. Um, and I really like like this thematic, like theme power set for this group of characters and players. Um, so it was just kind of fun to see them go on an adventure, and you know, get credits and kill monsters so they can get out of uh, this alien-owned um, boarding house and get their own place and then can save credits. Um, and it's just kind of a sh short little story nigga that's enjoyable. So for me, it gets a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. Um, a new script, a system apocalypse short story, with a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. Again, it's a short story. You know, don't, don't expect too much out of it or too much time, but there's still some nice, good story here. Okay. Next up, we have Iron Picks of the Week. Uh, this is the segment of our show where Iron Mitchell, a longtime Little Bitchy community member who reads and reviews as much as I do. He was nice enough to agree to join the podcast family as a reviewer for us. Um, and we're going to start off with his first review, which is going to be for Dragonheart, Land of the Demons, a lit RPG Wushia series, book number seven, written by Kirill Lukulitsky. Um, and Ian gives it a score of 8.5 out of 10. He really enjoys this series. He also likes Wook Shield. I think a little bit more than I do. And he says, this is a side mission. Still my favorite series. I like it better than the Cradle series and Crow Corvin didn't botch book number seven. That's always nice to hear. Hadar is still smart, is a smart, tough guy. I did get the feeling that his power level is exceeding the empire he lives in. The fights are great. Hadar's temporary orc sidekick added some nice flavor to the stew this time around. Not quite as tasty as the first six books. Bits at the end felt like easy mode. It'll be fun seeing Hadar back at school. So there we go. I have no idea what a lot of that reference is. I haven't read the series, but um, Ian has, has, has not it. He's enjoyed every single one of these books. So it's a good review from him. Um, next is going to be Silver Fox and the Western Hero, Warrior Forsworn, a Little Bridgie Wushi series, book number three. Um, Ian, Ian gives it a score of 8.8 .8 out of 10, and he says, Cultivation School and Other Hijinks. I really loved most of the first part of the book. Pacing, development, and emotional tone were excellent. I had a great time with the book. Some great fights. Very visceral might be a bit much for some. Something about the last part of the book felt odd in the pacing, I enjoyed it. Some expositions went on a bit long, as well as trippy cultivation breakthroughs. I can definitely recommend this as a similar feeling to the author's Endless Online series. So there you go. Um, Bio Dungeon is another review from Ian Mitchell. He says, uh, Bio Dungeon Symbiote, The Body's Dungeon, written by Jeffrey Falcon Logue and Jonathan Brooks. This was their collaboration effort between dungeon stories. He gives it a score of 8.2 out of 10 and says, Let's learn about the immune system. An enjoyable adventure. I like the human host parts of the story. They were fun and I really liked the characters. The core parts of the story were interesting enough to take in how the immune system works. I think it's cool how gamification gives an extra hook and a way for the reader to visualize and conceptualize the various parts of the immune system worth while reading. And he gives it a score, again, a score of 8.2 out of 10, which is, I think, the lowest of the podcast for the week. Nope, nope, not the lowest. Never mind. Uh, but it's still a, a good review score from Ian. Uh, next is Rise, Last Chance, written by KT Hanna. Um, he gives it a score of 8.0 out of 10, which is, again, a good review score from Ian. And he says, there's a bomb in your head. Don't tell anybody. Um, this quickly reminded me of how of the show Dead Like Me, plus spy shows, plus some anime. Dare had something happen, but can't tell anyone. There's an 
immediacy and intensity having a dead man switch. Having to keep all this secret ups the tension. What a way to disrupt a life. All of this creates a surreal quality to the experience. I like the mystery and the feeling that things aren't quite what they seem. With first person, the focus is on with first person, the focus is on Dare and the MC. That's what it says. The other characters have some definitions, um, but don't stand out for me. So we have a person thrown in the deep end of the hard mode. I like the story. I didn't have it didn't have the pacing of a standalone novel. All the same, I enjoyed the ride. Next episode of Dare's Bizarre Adventure, please. So there we go. That, this story actually had a, I don't know if it really found its audience. It, 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 I enjoyed Katiana's writing in general. Um, I'm glad I enjoyed it. There you go. That, that's what we'll say. Um, and the last review is going to be for Rebel Star, Little Bridgie Post Apocalypse, Space Opera System Apocalypse Book and Rate, written by Tao Wong. Um, I gives it an 8.8 out of 10. He says, almost a saver. John Lee is the guy who gets things done. Feed him enough chocolate and give him something impossible to do and he'll get it done. I love this guy. This time he helps save a space pirate base, except they really seem more of a last stop for people who don't fit in and won't give up. The worlds the author makes and his hero is plucky, angry, passionate, smart, and thinks about how to fix the broken things in the world. I really enjoy how often he gets curb stopped every book. That's <laughs> okay. Um, I binged the audiobooks for one through seven, which were great and read this one bonus for all the explosions, not much of the, on the romance side this time. Uh, the battle throughout the pirate base was epic. Reminds me a bit of the recent super supers book by Drew Hayes, raising Hephaestus. I'm not sure if that's actually the name of it, but there you go. I haven't read it either. Um, so I am going to give this a rebel star. Um, this, the eighth book in the system apocalypse series, eight, eight point eight out of 10. And uh, there you go. It's the end of Ian's Picks of the Week. And that is it, folks. The show is over. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me today. Uh, we had a great set of reviews. If you remember, if you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, and our website at littlebitpodcast.com. You can see all the amazing back catalog of podcasts. Remember, this is episode 239, which means you have 238 other shows that you can watch and, and listen to and, and, and subscribe to on your, on your podcast apps or YouTube or on our Facebook page and get, get the latest reviews from us every single week of, of every single week. Um, we also have links in the show notes for other Liberty Facebook groups where authors and readers mingle and we trade memes and we post stuff and it's fun. Um, thanks again for hanging out with me today, the ladies and gentlemen. Until we can hang out again, remember to read some little RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>